All right, so if we're trying to find this volume of this entire thing here by wrapping this around, you're right, Joey, and if we take the volume of, say, this thing, this outside part, we could call that like the outer shell of it, and just take it there and wrap it around the x-axis, what would that volume be? Yeah, it would be the volume of the entire thing if the entire thing were solid rather than having this funnel shape inside of it. How would we find that from what we were looked at uh, on yesterday? Or no, Tuesday. Pi times the integral. Okay, pi times the integral from 0 to 1. of this function squared. Now this outer shell is formed by the square root of x. Okay? So we have the square root of x being squared. Okay? So let's look, let's go ahead and uh, and find that. This is the integral of just x, right? So we have pi times the integral of x dx from 0 to 1. That's going to be pi times x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, and obviously the 0 is going to give us 0, but the 1 will give us 1 squared over 2 times pi, so pi over 2. Okay, so that's actually what the volume of this bowl would be if it were completely filled in. All right, does everyone follow me so far? Okay, now, the idea was to subtract. Okay, because look, what we found, what we just did is we revolved this entire area around the x-axis, okay? By subtracting what's underneath this, notice what we're left with. We're left with just the part that we actually wanted. We're left with this area between the functions revolved around. Okay, now we're dealing with volumes right now. We're going to subtract the two volumes. We're going to see in a moment how we can kind of do all of this in one big um, one step. And, and this is kind of the thing that we're trying to develop here. Okay, so this pi over 2 is our total volume. So let's find the volume of the inside. Okay, so you're right. We're going to use the x squared, and that x squared has to be squared. We're still integrating from 0 to 1. Okay? So what's, uh, you know, x squared squared is x to the fourth, obviously. So um, we have pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth dx. Well, what does that equal? What's the integral of x to the fourth? Yeah, there we go. x to the fifth over 5. So pi times x to the fifth over 5. Okay. So we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. Again, when you plug in 0, you're going to get 0. But here we have 1 to the fifth power is 1 over 5 times pi is pi over 5. Okay. So the volume of this bowl that we're looking at, the volume is going to equal the volume of the outer shell minus the volume of the inside. Okay? So we get pi over 2 minus pi over 5. 
which a half minus one fifth is three tenths. So this would be three pi over 10 cubic units, whatever those units are. Okay, so that's the volume of this thing once we've actually made it. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now, I told you what we want to do here is we want to derive our formula, okay? So I want to look at the work I just did and see if we can't generalize this a little bit, okay? You'll notice what we had here, the, the volume is the volume of the shell minus the volume of the inside, okay? So let's take those things and look at the integrals themselves, okay? The volume of the outer shell was this, okay? So I'm going to bring this down, okay? So we have that, and then we're going to subtract the volume of the inside, which was this, okay? Get rid of that part of it. Okay. Now, believe it or not, we actually can write this as one integral. Okay? Watch this. Because they are both multiplied by pi, I can factor out a pi, first of all. And then also, notice how the upper and lower bounds that I'm dealing with, the, uh, the uh, 0 and 1, is the same on both integrals. Okay? So watch this. I can do pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of x squared dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared squared dx. Okay? Now, because both integrals go from 0 to 1, I can now combine this into, two, into one integral. All right? So now I have my volume equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of x squared minus x squared squared. Okay? So that when you're evaluating that, would you separate them anyway? Well, that's the thing. You could when you were actually finding the integral. But the, the point of why I'm doing this here is because we've actually derived the idea for the formula here. Okay? That square root of x, when we're talking about the area that we want, okay? This area right here. The square root of x was the function on the top, okay? That was the function on the top. We'll say that from 0 to 1, we'll, we'll call this uh, f of x, and we'll call this one g of x, and we'll say that for from 0 to 1, I should use an open interval, 0 to 1, f of x is greater than g of x, right? f of x is greater than g of x for that interval from 0 to 1 between their intersections. So watch this. I'm going to generalize my formula to not just be a specific two functions, I'm going to say my volume equals pi times, and notice that square root of x was my f of x, so f of x squared minus the g of x squared with respect to x, and I'm going to enter, I'm going to integrate 
from A to B, okay? Where A and B are the intersection points, or I guess it doesn't have to be intersection points, it can be any two points we want to define it with as long as in that whole interval, f of x is greater than g of x, okay? So if f of x is greater than g of x, in the interval from A to B, okay? And that right there, guys, is our formula, okay? That's our formula. We don't have to think about, okay, outer shell, get that whole volume, then the inner shell, what's that whole volume, and then subtract them. We can actually square the functions themselves and subtract them. Okay? And that can actually lead to the integral being easier to do. Okay? So watch this. Here's, here we have another case. We have this horizontal line and then a parabola, 4 minus x squared. Okay? Now this is kind of a, kind of a cool shape. If you were to, if you were to actually... Um, revolve this around the x-axis, you know, this would be the cross-section, so it would be kind of like this donut shape, all right? It'd be kind of a donut shape, but um, it kind of would curve it kind of curve towards the outside edge but then the inside would be perfectly flat, okay? So it actually, um, my ring isn't like it, but a lot of rings, you know, that are, you know, you've got a gold ring or something and it's, it's curved on the outside, but it's flat on the inside. You know, that's kind of what this would look like if you revolved it around here, okay? So, let's say we are making a ring that has this kind of a cross section. If we were going to do that, we would need to know how much gold to make it out of, okay, which would determine cost. So we would need to find the integral, okay? So watch this. We have, we first of all need to determine our interval, okay? So where would, uh, where would the parabola 4 minus x squared cross the line y equals 3? We want to find A and B. So where would this, where would these meet? Uh, one and negative one. Yeah, one and negative one. Four minus x squared equals three. So that means x squared equals one. So x is plus or minus one. Okay. So that's the interval that we're going to integrate over. Okay. So now if I want to find the volume, uh, which function's on top? The parabola. The parabola. Yeah, the 4 minus x squared. So the volume is going to be pi times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 4 minus x squared squared minus 3 squared. Okay? The upper one squared minus the lower one squared. And now, we, just, we can just simplify. Okay? We simplify here. This is going to be a 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth. So if I subtract 9, I'm integrating... I'm integrating uh, 16 minus 9 would be 7 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth dx. Okay? So you see how this is a good case where 
you know, it kind of saved us a little bit of time to actually use the formula rather than to find both volumes separately and then subtract. Because when we simplify, which we would have had to do anyways, it actually gives us a simpler function and only one simple function to integrate, okay? So now we have pi times 7x minus 8x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5, and this is all integrated from negative 1 to 1, okay? So we have pi times, when x equals 1, it's just 7 minus 8 thirds plus 1 fifth, okay? But then we have to uh, evaluate at negative 1, with these odd powers it's going to change all the signs. So it's going to be a negative 7 plus 8 thirds minus 1 fifth, okay? Now this negative will change all these. And we end up with 14 minus 16 thirds, so that's going to be minus 5 and 1 third, plus 2 fifths. And that's going to be multiplied by pi. Okay. So let's see, uh, 2 fifths would be 6 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths is going to be 1 fifteenth. So 9 and 1 fifteenth cubic units. Okay? So, it's not terribly difficult. Okay? It's no, difficult, no more difficult than the other integrals you've done. It's just another formula, another application. Alright? And really, if you think about it, it gives you a really cool... Uh, cool looking objects once you see them in three dimensions there. So, it's kind of neat. All right. So, um, I've given you a couple to just try in the time that we've got left here, which is, um, which we'll see in a minute. But I want you to give some of these a try, see what you can do with them. All right, and uh, that'll be it.